Okay, welcome everybody to the uh, next amazing edition of the Global Moodle Mood. Um, it's good to see you all here. I was here last year thinking, what an amazing conference, and, and here I am again, so thanks for inviting me again. I hope you won't leave disappointed this time. Uh, so my name is Greg, and I'm going to talk to you about the UI components your course page can't live without. Okay. Uh, as promised in the abstract, during the, this presentation and uh, the conference, you'll have access to my Moodle portfolio where you, you can see more examples. There's only as much as you can fit into a 10-minute presentation, so uh, I, I only chose a couple of examples. The uh, QR code to log in is, is here. You can just type in, either use the QR code, type moodleportfolio.com and use these uh, credentials to log in. It's guest.account hyphen one, and there's 10 of these accounts, so please pick one, don't all use one, the same account. Uh, last year my site crashed when everybody <laughs> logged in at the same time, so if you have problems getting in, just wait a little bit uh, and refresh the page, and if things are not showing up as they should, just, just wait a little bit and you will get in eventually, and like, like, like I said, there's a benefit uh, to navigating to that uh, site because you can see more, okay? So just a couple of prerequisites. To understand everything I say and to be able to do it later on in your own modules, you need to have a basic understanding of HTML and CSS. You need to look at code and kind of try to uh, know what it does and how to copy and paste it. Uh, you need to be a Moodle admin or at least no one because there's some things that need to be set up beforehand before you can add these components. Everything is in my portfolio page, all the explanations you will need. Again, this is a very short session that acts as a demo more than than, than an actual workshop. And then you need to have editing access to your uh, module page. And that's really it, so let's move on. <clears throat> so first we are going to look at these UI components or web components or UI web components that they're sometimes they're called, what they are and what they do. Uh, then I'm going to briefly talk about how and where in the actual course page you can add them. Uh, the most exciting part will be the examples I'm going to show you, and then we'll move on to conclusions, okay? And obviously, if there's time for questions, then we'll have a few questions. So when we navigate a VLE or a website for that matter, we very often uh, come across these consistent elements like buttons, drop-down menus, nav bars, links, cards, etc. And they help us to navigate uh, the, the website faster, but they also help to organize information contained in that website. And they're, they're good for, for navigation, etc. But before, if you wanted to add these, these elements, you had to kind of code them from scratch. You had to write all the code yourself. But recent development, and using some of the frameworks you can see here, you can now just quickly copy and paste code that was uh, cons that's consistently written and, and, and from, uh, for example, from documentation. That's going to make sure that your components will always look the same. Or you can quickly apply classes to your existing elements and just quickly turn them into a component like a button, for example. And you might at this point think to yourself, well, hold on, Greg, but you know, Moodle already has these. When I go to settings page or when I go to activity page, buttons are already there and the, the accordions and everything. And yes, you, you would not be mistaken, but very often I feel that when you go down to the course page level and just remove all the navigation around it, just picture a course page, that's where these components can also be added. Uh, and that will also help a lot with organizing a course page. And that's where the idea for this came from. Also, it's good to see Sam here from Catalyst. That kind of that session is inspired by her last year's sessions about Bootstrap made me really think about it and dive deeper into these other frameworks. So as you can see here, Bootstrap is one, probably the most popular framework, has the most number of components. Also tools that will allow you to make these components uh, responsive, like Flexbox and Grid. Shoelace, a, a kind of a newcomer, a kind of bootstrap wannabe, but also becoming more popular with some additions to bootstrap. Doesn't have the layout options, but also very powerful. And Font, font Awesome, it's an uh, icon library, and Lottie Files is animations. And you could argue kind of that these two last ones uh, just for graphics, etc. but I think they're actually components on their own because they can be styled, they can be combined, they can take attributes, and again, uh, if you na navigate to my portfolio, you will see examples of that. Uh, okay, moving on. So where can I add these things in my Moodle page? So label would be a good starting point if you want to have them displayed on the course page, obviously. You could create a whole page with these. 
um, uh, on the page resource. Activity description field, that's also uh, one good place to have them. Uh, almost every activity or resource on Moodle has that field, and you can choose to display it on a course page if you wish. Uh, a quiz question, and really anywhere where you can see a text editor that allows you to switch to that HTML view and start coding in, in that text editor. And that's about it. So now let's look at some examples now, the most uh, exciting part. So tags would be very easy. Uh, very, very, uh, it's one example that's very easy to create. Tags provide extra information about the activity. Very often I like to tell students uh, if an activity is tracked, about the, if it's graded, if, it's, uh, if, it, if, it's, if there's a certain amount of time they should spend on it and, and, and all that extra information. There more visual, you can choose them to, to be displayed on the course page. And if you want to provide more information, uh, you can just also, and as you becoming more familiar with Bootstrap and these other components, you can activate them on popovers. So you can just create a button that uh, shows a student this message when the button is clicked. And you can get a little bit more into that message than just, uh, just a tag, okay? Quick clicks are essentially buttons, so Moodle allows to link to an activity or a resource or a section, particular section, and this helps especially when you have lengthy pages and students have to scroll up and down, up and down the, the, the scroll of death. You can create a, like a links menu on top of the page and then you can create a link back to that top of the page so students can jump instead of having to scroll. I know Moodle 4.0 deals with that really well, has that spy scroll, I think that's the right name for it, but not everybody is on Moodle 4.0 and above. So if you're still below, if you, I'm, my portfolio is still on Moodle 3.9, I am going to upgrade soon, but you can create a, a, very, a quick links menu. Uh, cards, very powerful uh, components. What cards do very well, they help you to combine text, images, and links together in a consistent and responsive way. I have seen in the past courses where people struggle with wrapping text around the images and on a desktop page it looks good, but once you start, once you start uh, uh, scaling the page on mobile devices, the text kind of weirds, uh, wraps around the, 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 the image in a weird way, so cards are a standard for including kind of text, images, and links together. Uh, timelines, also one of my favorite components, and here we see, uh, well, timelines are really good, not just for presenting information that is um, chronological, but also step-by-step uh, -step instructions, frameworks, etc. And here we have an example of a card-based timeline, and each card has an image, a collapsible accordion, so these things can be collapsed, and a link in the footer of the card. Now, this is all responsive. I can't show it to you right now here because this is a PPT, but if you go to my portfolio, either use the browser tools to scale the page, or just grab the page and make it a little bit narrower and see how these cards respond uh, to scaling of the page because they are fully responsive as Bootstrap lets you do that with the Flexbox layout. Moving on, accordions, also one of my favorites. Accordions, what they really do, they help to collapse content. Obviously, that's very useful when you have lengthy pages with walls of text, but you can also include images in it. Obviously, when you collapse content, there's issues because the content disappears, but what accordions do very well is that they have visual indication that something's collapsed. I think that chevron icon now is a universal uh, symbol for something being collapsed or hidden. And also, as you can see here, you can have the headers, different color. And all that code is already written for you. You don't have to write it from scratch. You just copy paste it. And if you become, as, as you become more proficient with Bootstrap, you can change these colors. You can add these icons. And also the image and the text here in that accordion is fully responsive. So again, try to scale the page and see how these reposition and how they even and, you know, launch the page on a, on a mobile device. Uh, and Lottie files, last but not least, my favorite, I think, in my opinion, the most powerful component. I like animations, I work with video a lot, and <clears throat> I noticed that pages like uh, Brilliant.org or all these other pages now use these very bite-sized chunks uh, these animations to explain concepts, mostly science-driven. And in the past, if you wanted to have an animation uh, on the... Uh, 
uh, on a page, you'd have to mess around with video. I s there was a period when people were do using GIFs. GIFs can only be looped or played once. That's not ideal. Lottie files allow you to deploy this, uh, this animation and trigger it on a number or a range of user uh, interactions. So you can have it on click, on scroll, uh, etc. So again, this is not playing because I used the GIF. <laughs> But in my page, you will see four examples of these animations and all of them triggered separately. Okay, so just conclusions to conclude. What, why, you sh should, why should you care and why is this good for, t for you to learn and, and do in your own pages? So obviously these, as I said, improve course page navigation and the look and feel of a page, make it more organized, make it more look, look more like it's kind of design following the modern web design standards and things like that. You can always try something new. That's where the inspiration for this came for me. I, you know, I just got, at some point, got tired applying the same uh, uh, templates and I just wanted really to try something new. And learn to code. That seems to be a very desirable skill now. Everyone wants to learn to code. There's a lot of transferable skills in that. Learning Bootstrap would not only allow you to, to learn skills for Moodle, but any other web site that you're working on, a web project, etc., etc. And just to conclude, uh, in my portfolio page, there are links to my code pen. If you're on code pen, uh, add me, I'll, I'll follow you back. Fork my projects, change them, tweak them, and, and share them, and share some of this open source goodness with, with the community. Okay, that's it for me, folks. Thank you very much. That was fast. Whoa. <laughs> and, uh, Let's take some questions. I see some uh, UX experts here in the audience, so please go easy on me. I'm just kind of starting in UX and UI. Hi. Uh, are you familiar with these uh, text filter plugins in Moodle that let administrators create templates? Because that's a really great way to distribute these kind of code snippets. Hmm. Like administrators can. I think like uh, filter codes and generic will let you do that. I'm not 100% okay. sure, but there's at least two text filter plugins where administrators can just put a lot of uh, HTML and users just select them. It used to be possible inside Atto Edit also. I'm sure it's now possible in TinyMC as well because that's just the most, the, the hmm. easiest way for uh, uh, average teacher to get such yeah. stuff in it. I, I'm not familiar with it. What's it called again? Text? Um, it's, uh, you know text filter plugins in Moodle. You know the, the concept of filter plugins. Oh, yeah, yeah, and filters, there's at yeah. least two filter plugins that I know of where administrators can create templates. And oh, you can okay. even have placeholders in the templates. Like you, uh, yeah. you can have all the HTML and like yeah. for a card have. Uh, so the teacher only fills in, this is the picture for the card, this is the text for the card, and yeah. he gets the card inserted automatically. Yeah. That's a very good idea, thanks. Um, yeah, it would definitely help if you want to include these as part of a template, so people wouldn't have to copy and paste the text, that would be there for them, and they can just change the link to the image, and that's it. Uh, yeah, very good idea, thanks. Thank you. Uh, yes, I would completely back up Generico uh, and um, filter codes especially. It does make life an awful lot easier. Snippets is the other plugin as well that okay. allows you to put that code in and then the teacher just fills in the information that they need. My question to you as somebody who works in video is, hmm. what's the best way to make video responsive? In a Moodle course, there seems to be a constant nightmare for a lot of staff. They copy and embed code, sometimes it responds, sometimes it doesn't, they have to work with iframes. I'm just wondering how do, you, how do we make that simple? I always encourage people to use uh, for video either the, these dedicated video hosting sites like Panopto for example, all these, this stuff that plugs into Moodle, Panopto, Medial, uh, media site, Ubicast, there's a whole range of them because they offer a lot more than just playback. 
They, and they, these pages are fully responsive. They are tested on portable devices, and they offer way more than just playback. They have smart chapters, they have CC generations, they have previews of slides, and all these things students need when they watch, uh, when they watch a video. Not to mention added interactivity, quiz questions on playback, and, and stuff like that. So I always encourage, I always push people for using these, because my university and probably your institution is already using one. They're probably paying for one, why not using it, you know? Again, like I said in my presentation, embedding video is really tricky sometimes on pages, working with iframes and trying to assign either fixed size or 100% of the container gets messy, but I always encourage people to do that. All right, thank you very much.